Hey, hey, it's TDA, and welcome back to episode 12, this perfect ratio run. And it's quite exciting, this part of the game, because you have a ton of directions to go in. And what we will be doing is actually making sure we have a way to process our science today, which will be quite straightforward. And then we will start focusing on a mall, an interstellar version of our mall, to be exact. However, I'm actually kind of wondering what uh, direction do you guys usually go in around this time, because you have a lot of options. If you look at the research, as soon as you unlock your purple research, you can, if you want, start working on your Dyson Sphere. So maybe that's what you do next. Um, you have a ton of options over here in terms of stuff you can produce. Um, specifically, you also have the access to the Mark III assembling machine. Is that a something maybe you go next for? Or you go straight for um, the science um, and warpers along with them maybe? Uh, let me know. It's actually kind of curious. You have like a ton of different directions you can go to. I didn't even mention, for example, the uh, uh, gas giant exploration thing. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments. But without further ado, and I really love this game. Just look how pretty this looks. Anyway, um, science. I actually have a blueprint from my previous run that I... It's not that interesting to build together, but I'll show it to you. It's a science though. And it's one of my favorite builds in the entire game. Why? Because it's just so damn pretty. Um, does it matter in which way direction we face this? No, I don't think so. Let's just put it down. Uh, domes are a little bit finicky when you put them down. But as you can see, this is basically uh, a science facility that also supplies some power. Why not? We have the room. And actually putting solar panels on your uh, po poles is actually very efficient. They tend to be uh, in the sun for a very long time. Um, and although the rings around your planet look very pretty as well, it's actually a pretty efficient way to power up everything around your planet. Now, what this actually does, and I'll show it when we get closer to the uh, ILS over here. It's actually quite straightforward. This thing is actually requesting all types of science. Uh, currently, we don't have green science yet, so, but of course, once we put it in, that works. Make sure you put some vessels and some drones in here. And you need the drones because, as you can see, uh, there's actually no way to transport them in directly. And this is one of the places where I think making uh, using drones makes sense. Uh, this is not a high production type of facility. Of course, we are doing research, but um, compared to, for example, production facilities, this doesn't actually use that many drones, so you might as well use them. And yeah, it just looks really good. Um, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, so one more thing. This actually doesn't have any warpers uh, because we will have five different types of research in here. Uh, we don't have a space to request warpers. So once we get to the green signs, uh, you might want to put in another ILS, maybe somewhere in here. Get a belt across and then make sure you have the warpers going in. If you are actually... Um, making it on a different planet or in a different system i should say uh, as long as you keep your science in this system which i think you can um this works perfectly so you don't really need to warp or sit but it is something to watch out for now already halfway done building this um it's quite straightforward it has all the science going in rings around um, but of course this won't actually be doing anything unless we have our three base sciences up and running in terms of um, drone supply now let me see where is our facility and this is where the little rings around become really handy it's over there so let's go in that direction and we will need to set that up with some and you see actually I'm low on power now which is purely due to the uh, ILS is charging up I placed a few at the start of this um, episode we can actually dismantle these now because we won't be using the science here anymore which also means we can take this down we can probably take these down as well make sure everything is still powered but i think it is yes and then we can probably put in the all this should fit in here i think yeah there we go all right there let's cut this one a little bit short as well Let's make sure we have our yellow signs going in. This should. Oh, 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 oh. 
work with me here. There we go. And now we have this one. And of course you do need to set this up. So make sure you put in the signs all over here. Uh, this is one I suggest you just keep at max. Unlike many of the other builds we've done. Uh, there's no downside of overproducing science. Uh, you might want to set this up a little higher though. Uh, this is all set to supply already. So as soon as we have power to this thing. Which we don't actually have at the moment. There we go. The drone should start flying off. There we go. And the drones themselves balance themselves kind of out. So that's really nice. So we have all three types of science going in. This is just this is showing by the way why I don't recommend using the drones too much because look at how slow these things are. Uh, and they are only carrying I think it's like 25 at the moment or something like that. Uh, not the most efficient way to get things to your uh, production centers. But for science it works fine because again you don't need huge amounts. I do recommend that the first few things you research are um, basically this one the mass construction because that will make sure you can now use blueprints without any limits um, it's a fairly expensive research but it will be worth it because the next few builds we are going to do are going to be huge so you probably won't be able to fit them in the uh, 3600 okay um let's make sure that we wrap this up And then you get to see the glory of our science hub. And as you can see, the science is moving in circles around. Uh, it's very simple, but yeah, I can stare at this forever. And to be honest, you, you can stack up the science facilities as well, but you really don't need to because this is so many science facilities that the science will be uh, plugging along at a pretty decent speed regardless. So should be fine. As you can see, all the science is being absorbed at the moment. There's some more drones coming in. We can probably put some drones in. Oh, there are actually already drones in here. So that's good. So that should be uh, sorting itself out. We have the purple science. We have all the other three sciences going in. There we go. Okay. Now let me get some base materials. Fly off to a nice little spot. And let's start working on our mall. Okay. And here we are. I think this is a nice little spot. It's a, a nice long stretch of ground uh, of course there was water here so i built that in it's also next to where our old mall used to be we will be taking that out um but let's build a new mall first before we start destroying things now this is not going to be a very complicated build because of course it's just the basics it's actually going to be even more simple than our previous mall uh, because there are several items in here that we don't need so for example uh, zooming in a little bit uh, we don't need the belts or the sorters anymore because we're producing those elsewhere we also don't need assemblers anymore because we are producing mark II assemblers so all in all it simplifies things a little bit now um let me space this out correctly i don't think it come is that close but let's make sure we get it right the first time uh, we are going to need some steel and iron and um, we are actually going to connect the belt like this. So this is going to be an iron belt connecting to the steel. So some iron here and then we have our steel over here. And by that we have two of the materials fixed already. Now we also are going to need some um, glass and stone. Which we'll be making over here. And we are going to do that like this. Uh, of course. There we go. Um, I'll try to go for as much symmetry as we can once again. Um, I don't want to be overproducing a lot of this stuff. So the symmetry is broken here and there by just a little bit. Uh, because we simply don't need everything in high quantities. Now this will be the glass and stone. Or let's just say uh, concrete, of course, because we make that out of stone. And the stone will be coming down here so we can get those in into the uh, both the glass as well as the concrete facilities. Um, 
let me see so um of course that does mean that we actually need the glass to go somewhere so we might want to move all of this up just a little bit just moving those over here oh oh oh, oh. sorry about that um let's do it like this there are smarter ways to do this probably uh this is just how i usually do it and uh, let's do that like that so and now we also have somewhere for the concrete to go so now we have an outgoing for the concrete and now going for the glass and we'll have to figure out in a bit what goes where um okay now we also need to have the steel and we'll have an outgoing belt of steel so this will be steel we will have some glass and concrete and uh, we don't need we shouldn't forget that this is actually the iron belt and that means that we also have an incoming of iron ore over here there we go so this will be iron ore and this will be stone now um what else do we need we actually are going to need some magnets as well so i'm actually going to put down another belt uh, like this and this is going to be a belt supplying or for the magnets but i also need an outgoing belt for the magnets so let's do that like this and then we can have the magnets over here now magnets are a little bit slow in production but you don't need that many of them but about twice as much of uh compared to the other items should do the trick and uh, now let's make sure we forget that we put that on here and let's make sure we forget that this should be iron okay so that ha it means we have a lot of things already covered but now we also need some copper and the copper is going to be over here and again we don't need that much copper and i'm trying to keep the ratios as tidy as i can compared to what we're actually producing so just four of them will do and by doing that that means that we can uh, not that one this one uh, then we can put in two facilities producing uh, magnetic coils so this will be the copper and that should be like that and then we have all the materials that we need for the magnetic coils over there pretty straightforward kind of like one of the first builds we've done but all in all this is going to be a little bit faster of course because we have the mark two production facilities over there and then last but not least in terms of the core production items that we need let's make sure that we don't forget that we actually need to supply this with copper ore and then we have a belt with iron over here and then we need some more iron production because the other iron is going into the steel. And this is going to be ironing, like I said. There we go. Uh, nice spread out. It's a different setup than what we've used before. Um, but it looks quite clean, I think. Okay. So this is copper. And then this is iron ore. There we go. And then, of course, we do need an incoming facility over here. Now, I kind of want to put it over there, and that seems to be quite nice with the spacing compared to the other one over there. So that should be fine, and this should be supplying stone. It needs iron, it needs copper, and I think that's about it. Of course, we also want to be requesting warpers. Uh, remember to put your warpers to a low amount, because you don't need one, hundreds of warpers in here. And we might as well make sure we supply it with some... Drones. Do I have drones? Actually, I don't have drones. Okay. So let me flip to the other side of the planet where our drone build is. Uh, it was this one, I think. No. This one. There we go. And that means we can now supply it with drones. There we go. Nice and easy. Our hydrogen rods are also still being quite useful and once again you don't want to be putting this to a maximum amount just set it a little bit lower 
before you start demanding stuff. It's probably not going to be getting in that much stuff just yet, but that's fine. There we go. Now let's have an outgoing belt for copper. I don't think I actually said that one. No. There we go. And I've been supplying some of my other facilities with drones. I just made the same mistake again. Uh, so you can see there's actually drones starting to fly around now. I will probably want to fix that in a second because I don't want my uh, stations to be supplied by drones uh, from everywhere. And I really just need to stop doing this manually. Anyway, okay, there we go. It's not obviously not working yet, but this will at least make sure that there's actually materials coming in. Uh, actually, before I forget, uh, I was noticing I was running a little bit low on power. That has everything to do with the fact that I'm putting ILSs in everywhere. And the drones are not helping that either. Uh, and what I did was I actually put in a huge uh, dome of um, solar panels. And I've, of course, made a, a little blueprint for that. So you don't have to manually place them one by one. I think it works kind of nice. Uh, and this is a huge amount of power being supplied from this area alone. I think it's like 200 megajoules or something like that uh, that I've added just by building this. And the reason you might want to do this on a lot of your planets is that, as, like you can see now, over three quarters of these are actually active. And if you put in rings around your planet, only half of them by default is going to be active at any given time. So it's just more efficient to put them on the poles. And this is typically not an area where you're building a lot of other stuff anyway. So you might as well put it to use for your power production. Anyway, back to the build. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, production for the magnetic coils. Now, um, let's see, where are we going to put those in? I think we're going to put that in over here. And then we're going to bring it down here or something. We'll figure that out in a second. Now we also need some production for um, circuit boards. And those are going to be over here. Circuit boards, there we go. That was the wrong button, apologies. And we have copper on this belt. Uh, we have, oh, sorry, we have uh, iron on this belt and we have copper on the other belt. So that has everything we need so that we can also put in this to be the circuit board production. Now, um, what else do we need? Let's see. We actually need nothing else in terms of base productions, but we of course do need a lot of production when it comes to the, um, yay, research, more power. Uh, we, we need a little buildings, so let's start putting those in. Um, I think we can probably do it like this, just to keep it nicely aligned with everything else. Um, yeah, doesn't really matter to be honest. You can put it a little bit more north, then we waste a little bit less space, but let's do it like this. Um, I'm not sure how many we need exactly, actually, but let's find out. This is going to be a production for oil extractors we are going to have to put in a uh, plasma exciter production over here as well as a prism and then we're going to need another plasma exciter over here you might remember this from our previous build and then we are going to put in a oil refinery there we go uh, now what else do we need we actually need a uh, chemical plant we need some science production we need some let's make sure i get the order right we are putting in the graph uh, the traffic monitors in case you want to make some music that's pretty much the only reason uh only thing i'm using them for personally um i haven't really found a good reason to use traffic monitors anywhere else to be honest um but yeah uh not sure if you actually know this but you can actually put an alarm on your buildings themselves so if you put it on, for example, now it will say, hey, this building is not powered. No, well, of course it's not powered because I haven't put the power in, but it actually gives you the warning already. It, it, it will give you similar warnings when it's not producing, if it's um, uh, if it can't 
um, put its stuff away if it's if there's a stockpile in the system and everything is being blocked things like that so I'm not sure why you want to put in traffic monitors on your belts if you can just put the alarms on the buildings but anyway you have that option just pointing it out because I can imagine that not a lot of you actually know that uh, alarm option is there it took a, a long time for me to notice that actually um, storage storage I always only use the small boxes by the way uh, they're a little bit more space efficient than the, the larger versions um, in terms of how much you can put in them versus how big they are uh, again one of those things I've never really found to use for bit using the bigger ones but of course if you want to put them in that's fine um, similarly I rarely use these but might as well put them in uh, we are also going to need some wind turbine production just in case some power pole production and then we only need three more items I think three more buildings that is um, we want some smelters and we want some miners um, now in order to have the smelters and miners actually being produced we also need some cogs and I don't make them in my other build I just make them over here so that we also always have those being supplied now um, <clears throat> let's make sure we hook everything up correctly um, let's see actually we don't really need this belt but now it's here anyway we might as well use it um, yeah. I just realized you can just have this and then have it go over anyway um, doesn't matter this works as well this is going to be our um, concrete and we are going to have to cheat a little bit here because otherwise it's just going to be a pain and this is going to be the concrete just marking this down so I actually remember what goes where this is going to be the uh, circuit boards and we need those pretty much everywhere so let's do those all like that these are the uh, magnetic coils similarly we also need those pretty much anywhere it's everywhere so let's do that like that same for the concrete uh, did I say concrete yes I did I think that needs to be glass actually let me check yes because we are going to be producing the cogs on this side now this still needs, needs glass as well as cogs so this is the splitting point and then we have the cogs going on over here so that means this needs to be the glass 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 this is the circuit boards and then last but not least we have the coils over there okay so um that fixes that so that also means that can go in there and then this is going to be our concrete the concrete can go all the way down here and then all the way down there like so and now you might be wondering okay so then we have the steel of course and makes sense that that goes in over there and we need to stop actually I forgot one building I think didn't I yes I did okay uh, yeah so <laughs> I actually forgot the uh, storage uh, what are these called storage tanks so I'll, I'll have to put those in in a second but I'll do that off screen so just finishing up this part of the build um, and then last but not least we are going to have to bring in the iron and the iron is going to go let's do it like that actually all the way around I like that and why do I do it like that well uh, it's either that or putting half of the production facilities on this end I prefer to have everything on one end 
and you might as well just flip it around. It kind of looks cool. Um, I actually wonder, can I put in solar panels? Mm, not like this. But you can put in the power poles like that. So we'll just use it for that purpose. But either way, it was a nice thought. You could add in a row of uh, solar panels if you want, just by moving this one little uh, space. Okay, and then of course we need to do a few things in terms of the um, um, ILSs. And the ILSs are actually, um, okay, hold on. Let me just put in the one building and then we get back and we finish up the ILSs because there is a little trick that I want to show you that you might not be aware of. And it is kind of important when you reach this part of the game. So be right back. Okay, belt adjusted, and now we all just need to put in the ILSs, and we are going to do that in the following way. We are going to leave a little bit of room in the back over there, as you can see. Um, let's try to align this pretty nicely otherwise. Now, we are going to need several of these, and we are going to make sure we align them at the same way, but I'm actually going to space them out a little bit like this, just with one extra square in between doesn't matter too much by the way how much you space them out it's just how i prefer to do it and three of them should be enough now um, the idea is it's going to be pretty simple we are going to simply be putting in the buildings that we've been uh, setting up here like so and of course you can fit five if you want but um, normally I would say no, make sure you stick to uh, uh, four, so you ha leave some room for the um, warpers, but in this case you actually don't need to. Right now I have five buildings that will be uh, going in here, so we have the miners, miners. we have the smelters, well, what else do we have? We have the turbines, we have the wind of the power towers, and what was the last one? It was the um thermal power plants there we go so this is five so now you actually won't be able to set in any of the um request for warpers remember to set the vessels and the drones to minimum um the drones actually don't matter because this will not be using any drones uh, but you do want to set the vessels to the minimum in case you are requesting small amounts you don't have the stockpile completely full yet for some reason uh, and by doing that you will make sure that you have um always the ability to request your uh, items from the other side of the galaxy if you need them. Now, uh, in terms of how many items you want to be producing, I suggest that at least in terms of the uh, smelters, you set the maximum quite high. Uh, same for turbines in case you want to use them. I typically don't use really turbines at this point anymore, so I put them a little bit lower. Um, everything else probably doesn't matter that much, but make sure you set them to amounts that make sense. Uh, you probably don't need 500 uh, miners, but you do need quite a lot of these smelters. So make sure you uh, produce quite a few of them so you don't start running out at some point. Of course, they are pretty easy to produce, so they will fill up quite quickly. But you don't want to run out in case you're making larger builds. Now, the warpers themselves, what we're actually going to do is bring them in like this. So this one will have warpers at some point. And... Um, yeah, you can actually do it like this. So set it to warpers like that. So this will be an incoming belt of warpers. So what we do need to do is set this to warpers, which we can't actually do just yet. So we'll do that in a second. Um, same here. This is going to be the warper line, so to speak. Now we are already requesting warpers over here that we are making them but once we do they will be coming in and if we now set this to warpers like this and we bring them down all the way around here like that this will now be supplied by warpers and oh, I actually don't have the interstellar Research for that unlock. So that is also a thing, actually. Um, it is not uncommon for people to kind of forget that you need the research. 
it's I think it's actually this one that I'm researching right now. If you don't have this research, you, research you can't actually warp, and neither can your vessels. So in about eight seconds from now, I will have access to this research, and that should be fixed. But yeah, make sure that you don't forget to do that. Okay, drive engine unlocked. And if we now check this, we still don't have it. Why don't we have it? It's a different research probably than I want. I was looking at. So let me check. Uh, we probably need the uh, this one. There we go. Uh, it's logistics carrier engine. So you need this one to un unlock the vessel uh, warps warpers on the vessels. Look at me talking. I still can't talk properly. So you do want to queue this up so you can actually make sure that you get the warpers there. Uh, okay. Anyway. And the last thing we need to do is hook up all the other buildings. So we have everything like here. I'm going in here. I like this. And we don't need the engines. We do need the... Well, need might not be the correct word. But we do want these to go in here. And there we go. This should probably not be here. Let's make sure we do it like that. There we go. Now we should have plenty of room for all our buildings. Because this is one, two, three, four. Yes. And that means the last one over here is going to be this one. There we go. Now, all that we have left to do is make sure everything has its sorters set up. We also want to put in, of course, some nice little foundation in order to wrap this up. And then let's see it in action. So we are right back. Okay, there we are. We have everything powered up. We have everything sorted out, literally. And we have all our production up and running. So as you can see, uh, all these uh, facilities are quietly, quite nicely uh, producing our base resources a lot of our buildings are actually already producing now don't forget to actually take down actually already did this in here take down your original mall it serves no purpose anymore you're actually producing buildings in there that you will never use again like the base versions of the um, belts and sorters and uh, put those buildings into your ILS over here and remember if you zoom out to the map you can access any ILS from anywhere in the planet, um, assuming I'm on the correct view. So let's do it like this. So even if I go to the other side of the planet, I'm like, hey, I need some foundations. I can just pick them up from over here and put them in my inventory. So remember that you can do the same thing. It's a really easy way to kind of clean out your inventory in your uh, original mall and put them in your buildings uh, over here. And as you can see this make sure you start out with a nice stockpile of uh, smelters um, miners etc once these are filled up and as you can see the smelters sorry the miners for example are already filled up as well as the wind turbines um, then the overflow in terms of iron which is the main bottleneck in this build uh, will be going down this belt further on of course you already have the steel going in this is why i also split up the iron and steel production over here it's not really going any really fast or anything like that, but it doesn't need to go fast because if, as you can see, um, this is mainly bottlenecked by the fact that we don't have the exciters and the exciters will be coming in for over here. But you don't need these buildings in huge quantities and because we've already been producing them since the start of the game, um, we have quite a lot of them already stockpiled in here and we don't need these either. So it's just a matter of time uh, before all of this it really gets nicely up and running and as you can see this is already producing at a quite nice speed it's 30 per second and oh actually forgot a sorter over here this is why this is not doing anything that should help with the speed on that one and as you can see now everything is working so this is a nice easy build uh, not really anything complicated so to speak but um, it is one of the necessities that you need in order to proceed into the later parts of the game and once this second part of the research is done where we get access to the logistics vessels warp, don't forget to go back to your ILSs and you will have an icon popping in over here, which is the warpers. And then you can connect this belt to supply warpers to everything. You can just have an incoming belt from the warpers over here 
And even though there's not actually a slot available in here, it will still stock up the warpers and you can still export the warpers on the other side again. So that is a nice thing that you can do so that you don't have to request warpers on every single ILS you have on your planet. And that should fix that. Now, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, a light, nice little science build along with some very nice uh, power production over here. I just like the looks of this. Don't know about you, but it's so damn efficient. And as you can see, most of these solar panels are currently in the sun. So this is completely optimizing the energy production. And now we have an interstellar uh, mall going on. Now, this is actually not a complicated build. So to compensate, I will make the next build one of the most complicated ones we will probably do in this game. And that is the Mark III Assemblers. These assemblers are very nice, but the Mark III ones are 50% faster. It also means that um, we can kind of scale down some of our builds that we make after that. Because, of course, instead of three of the Mark II ones, you can have the same production going on with two Mark III assemblers. So that's nice. Okay, I hope you look forward to that, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.